quickly. This is courtesy of RA regarding a fairly sad occurrence that's basically happened, I think, off the back of, I think, is it Crossbreed? I think it's called, is it Crossbreed? Um, I think it's Crossbreed. I think it's, is it Crossbreed? Yeah, it is Crossbreed. Um, Crossbreed basically um, announced that they've effectively uh, stopped doing their nights at RA, sorry, at, Flim at, at the Color Factory. And if you're not aware, Crossbreed is essentially this really cool um, sex kick party that does these really cool events where essentially they allow people to be sexually liberated and free um, in their cool events that they host. They have like a little social they do where you can come and meet new people and kind of get engrossed in the community. I think actually the actual term, let me see how it says here. Um, the actual um, description of Crossbreed is here. So I can actually just show, hey, read it to you without butchering what they're about. But essentially it says here, Crossbreed was born through a realization that almost everything good in this world materializes through collaboration in a society where we are expected to be able to know and do everything to ourselves we want to harness our creativity and play together our music is made collaboratively and our parties encourage freedom of expression and hedonism we believe in breaking down social constructs and stigmas we welcome open minds and respect to, uh, and respect for others we have no tolerance for prejudice or bigotry or any kind consent is not just a word it's our right here we are all equal we welcome queerness individuality kink sex positivity love and kindness crossbeats is a platform for positive human interactions by kiwi i actually met this guy kiwi on the dance floor of berghain um whilst we were both trying to you know with some other people involved to um make sure some girl was okay because she looked like she was tripping her head off but she f ended up being perfectly fine in the end but i actually bumped into him on a dance floor of the berghain once and he was actually a very pleasant and nice guy but unfortunately it looks like um they've had to stop doing their parties at the color factory i'm pretty sure because there's been a complete change in their approach from the local council where they do their parties at entire hamlets council and now they're organizing a protest i think it says here there's a courtesy of ra there's a protest to protect king spaces planned in east london today tower hamlets is meeting to decide whether to uphold or remove a non-unity clause from not whopping club e1's license which is pretty hectic, says here. Members of London's kink, leather and BDSM communities are planning a protest outside Tower Hamlets later today on Tuesday. Set for 6.30, the protest will co coincide with Tower Hamlets Council hearing regarding Whopping Club E1, which recently applied to have the non-nudity clause removed from its license. The council objected. Today's hearing will decide on its final outcome. Um, we have objected to the application to vary permission premises license to remove the non unity clause as police informed us of a alleged sexual assault that took place in the venue. A spokesperson of the Tower Hamlets told RA, we have concerns that re removing this clause may undermine the licensing objectives of public safety and prevention of crime and disorder. It's just they're making up these things just to kind of, you know, dumb out fun and just to drive most of these things underground because they effectively don't want it. As countries are full of people that don't want fun. Anyway, it continues. This isn't about discriminating against queer kink and sex positive communities. Yes, it is. Who hire these premises and on an ad hoc basis. It's about the management of the premises and the ability to keep customers safe within the boundaries of their license. Bullshit. The clause which cites a 1982 government act was brought to attention to E1 and enforced by the council in March. The dispute centers around um, to whom the clause applies. The council says it's the public and performers, while E1 says it's performers only. The alleged sexual assault took place at an event run by Fetish Party Torture Garden in February. So essentially they're punishing the entire King community for one incident that occurred at one party in February. Absolutely crazy. And if you think for the amount of events that happen out there, especially for, for, the, for, for the amount of events, frequency, scale of events that happen in London on a weekly basis, for there to be one, ev one serious sexual assault that occurred in this sort of niche only in February is pretty incredible, to be honest, especially when you consider the type of parties that they do, essentially kink and sex positive parties, which are essentially people going out there and express themselves freely as they can with their sexuality. So that's loads of skin, loads of leather and loads of horniness going around, right? So the fact that there's only one sexual assault in February and they're punishing everybody for it is absolutely ridiculous, to be completely honest. But it continues. The council argues that anywhere with a light dress code or semi-nudity will ultimately lead to sexual assault. Come on. This is like victim blaming to the, to, to the key in it it's like saying if you go out on a short skirt and you get raped that you kind of deserved it 
this is bullshit. Carl, the founder of Chris Fetish Party, um, Club of Everton told RA, we don't see the link between someone's sense of fashion and their alleged incident. I 100% agree. Um, he's added, we would much rather see an environment where we can all be honest and transparent about it and where we can provide infrastructure when things go wrong. But unfortunately, in the UK, we don't like honesty and we don't like to talk op- like rationally like adults. I still think a lot of this, from what I remember, might come from that one flipping rule change from back in the day in the acid house days right when they used to do these acid raves in flipping fields and shit i remember there was a story that i read on the podcast a while back that they must have thrown this acid rave somewhere in this crazy field somewhere in the middle of england that happened to be unfortunately on the lands of somebody pretty well to do and posh who had a connection with the tory government at the time that person complains to the tory government mp that they're friends with they then put in a law basically overnight that effectively banned any kind of outdoor gathering illegal one in that kind of realm or whatever it may be that kind of still had reverberations to what we're experiencing now so that one field party that one forest rave um on the on the land of somebody that's well to do effectively fucked us over for all these years and it still hasn't been changed to this day pretty crazy but i think that's the case and we're still feeling the reverberations of it now because you get the feeling especially when the lockdown happened it seemed like you know this government was flipping over the moon to close clubs even though it brings so much value to london especially when it comes to income and money and shit and the economy you know they they were over the moon when they had to close clubs they really wasn't budging at all you know clubs were the first to close and some of the last to open some of them never opened to them Oh, I bit my tongue there. Anyway, continue. Since the clause was enforced in March, E1 has cancelled between 10 and 12 queer and kink nights, according to co-founder Yuval Hen. One of those nights was Club Verboten, which Carl confirmed has been taking place at another venue. That's another really popular one, actually, going up in London. There's quite a few in it here in the UK, actually. Um, but again, you know, there are quite a few, but then they can only operate in certain spaces. They have to, there's a lot of, I'd imagine a lot of these kink parties, they're not like the club events that I put on where you just hire a DJ, you get some decks behind, you know, a booth, whatever it may be. You maybe sort out the sound and that's it and you're ready to go. These are events where they have to do a lot of consulting and kind of conversation with the club owners, maybe educating this club security in terms of what to expect and how to treat their customers and partners when they come through the door to make it a flipping safe space. It's a lot of, it's a lot of a communication that goes on, a lot of liaising, right? A lot of kind of meetings, a lot of emails. So even though there's a lot of these parties in some way, shape or form, there probably aren't a lot of places that they can put their events on because a lot of people will, will probably be up for it. And you have to find spaces where you feel safe. So the fact that they can't go to E1 and E1 cancel 10 to 12 shows you that there's a real lack of, um, options in terms of where they can go and put these events on and make it feel somewhat safe. Um, Hent cancelled the event <coughs> because of the new restrictions placed on entry. Under the current rules, door staff will be required to determine the birth sex of every attendee. Jesus. So as to rule out any nudity inside. For example, someone assigned a female at birth would have to cover their nipples or be denied entry. Who am I to be, come to a person and ask them to take their top off and determine whether they're a man, a woman, or trans, or non-binary, or whatever, and whether they're risking any of my license at Hen? It's ridiculous and I agree according to Carl part of the problem is the 1982 act only considers two binary sexes male and female which is absolutely unworkable highly discriminatory and he added if you're not cis male you're fucked <sighs> man this society we live in this like this for all the advances that we have we're still living in a fucking dark age isn't it god almighty and to think a lot of cl- some will, some could argue a lot of the best versions or the best aspects of club culture have basically spurned from the queer lgbtq um non-cis male side of things right that's where all the goodness has come from and for whatever reason they are the communities that are also getting discriminated at the most right it's absolutely heinous. If the council wins the clause and the clause remains, e ones will have to completely stop hosting Queer and King Nights. Carl added, saying it would be it wouldn't be right to continue running Club Verboten at E1. The same goes for any other clubs and venues in Tower Hamlets. If it goes through, Club Verboten gone. The backstreet's gone. Crossbreed gone, says Carl. So within a week, Tower Hamlets just lost all the kink and queer ham- queer communities. And London Nights are Amy Lammy is nowhere to be seen. Amy Lammy. How does she still have a job? And when does, if somebody knows in the comments down below, I'd love to find out, man. How does this lady still have a job? She got, a, she got the, she got the, she got the job of the century in terms of being the London Knights are and looking after all things London nightlife. She has absolutely 
minuscule experience about running club nights and knowing anything about London nightlife and how to, you know, the problems that are, are in it, how to accurately address them, knowing some of the people that are involved in it, the stakeholders, all this stuff. She's completely clueless. She's Canadian too. Shouldn't matter, but come on, let's let's be honest. It's a pretty bullshit. I mean, you know, she's a British citizen. She's still Canadian. It's fucking garbage. And at the back of it as well, she's kind of, it feels like hesitant to get involved for whatever reason. I'm not sure if it's a political thing. Maybe it's a political thing. Maybe it's just her not knowing what she's doing. But even when the stuff was happening with Fabric, she was very hesitant to get in, get herself involved and kind of throw a hat in the ring and say something, you know, to support what was going on and to basically lend a hand or to explain something. It was very, very reluctant until, the, until you know, the, the ban on Fabric finally got, you know, I think whatever the, 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 the risk of it closing was kind of alleviated. Finally, Amy Lammy kind of popped out of the woodworks and started talking more. But she's been very, very timid in her approach and anything going forward. And you haven't really heard much about her. And the thing that's annoying about it is that I remember the time when she got hired as a, as a night star. They also announced at the time that they were either copying it from Amsterdam, Holland and Amsterdam or Amsterdam and Holland were also launching at the same time. But I, whatever I remember, whoever the Knights are is for Amsterdam, he was doing mad stuff. Like he was at the forefront. He was talking about nightlife all the time. He was pushing for certain things, fighting back against certain things. Like he was really out there, like talking a lot about it. And it felt like he was really engrossed in the community, blah, 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 blah. And it was a real contrast between how he was going about the job and how she was going about a job. It was very like, she was going about a job, like essentially like a politician, um, just cashing in the check and not really doing much. And he was really trying to make a change in the short time he had available. And I really do wonder, is this Night Czar job linked to being, um, linked to Sadiq Khan because he's the one that basically implemented the Night Czar as part of him being mayor of London? Or is this a position for life? Because she seems to still be there. Maybe because Sadiq Khan is still there. Hopefully when we get a new mayor, she changes. But is this a role that you get for life? That you don't ever give up? Or is this a role that changes based on who the mayor is? Because this is fucking absolutely heinous that she's still the night star and absolutely doing nothing to help anything when it comes to nightlife and, you know, um, any kind of threats towards venues closing or changing in restrictions or policies, whatever. Like when when everything went down with Dalston, she was nowhere to be found either. Just a complete nothing burger when it comes to that sort of stuff. But um, let me go back to the article. Um, both Carl and Hen said their fight won't end tonight if the council wins. I will I will take them all the way to the high court at Hen. As for the protest, Carl said he expects around 300 people to show up in rubbering gear outside Tower Hamlets. July 26th, a piece about the update mentioned the torture. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. So I, I, I want to know what actually happened in the end. And anyway, did they um did they win or did it actually go go through? I really wonder what actually happened. Let me see if I can find out because I'm actually curious to see if this actually changed club the button. Let's see if they if actually anything actually happened. Because that's a crying shame if we lose all those amazing queer. And again, those nights are great because what it does is that it kind of offers up another avenue for people who are into that kind of stuff to go, like a safe space that they can kind of go and attend. Um, and obviously they can just cultivate their own little community that is outside of the kind of conventional nightclub dance music industry type thing, which I think is fucking awesome. Um, let's see, what do we do here? They did protest already. It says here through the Instagram account, updated ten hours ago. What does it say here? Press to my uh, fighting. Say, Clouds, thank you so much for Doherty for the article on Vice. So yeah, there's an article on Vice that showed them all protesting and stuff, which is great to see. Really, really amazing to see actually protesting outside Tower Hamlets, making their voices heard. So what actually happened in the end? Did they did 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 they win the protest? Did it not go through? Was the was the, okay? Let's see if they got any. Uh, let's see here loads of screenshots here from the protest itself people taking pictures and making their voices heard in rubber we trust in tower hammers we don't i like that article i like that sign very well put together sir safe king spaces yeah loads of good shit let's see how protesters are fighting back what actually happened anyway let me see if i can get any actual concrete news about it uh tower hamlets kink king kink let's see what happens here uh two days ago what happened is there just an update here 
protect here 16 hours ago they're flying back to safe king space to 16 hours ago okay no idea what happened no idea what the ruling was but hopefully it did change things going forward this the article that everyone's kind of referencing in their instagram stories and stuff protesters are fighting to save king clubs i'll add the link to the profile so it's a description if you want to check out yourself and you can kind of get some background information on what's going on and how you can help or how you can support from far